got a very important book here. Yeah, see? Yeah, you want to hear? You want to read? Hear some of the case for animal rights? Hey everyone. So for those of you who've been following my advocacy for a while, you know I like to make it animal centric. And over the last couple of years, I've also been incorporating a rights based approach. My friend Roger Yates had a fantastic suggestion that can pull these two ideas together, and that's reading animal rights philosophy to the residents at my local animal sanctuary. Just a quick shout out for all the sanctuaries out there. Um, 2020 is going to be a particularly hard year, I think, for all of them. So please remember to support your local sanctuary. Um, everything from going there to volunteer, um, financial donations, obviously, and even just sharing their social media posts. I mean, it all helps them to stay sustainable. After all, it's thanks to these vegan sanctuaries that the uh, am ambassadors of the movement, one might say, can speak for the other animals who aren't at sanctuary. In this first episode, I have a chat with my friend Ruby, who you may remember from a while ago, um, um, we had a bit of a play with where she chased me around. She's such a sweet girl, and she's pretty open to hearing what Tom Reagan has to say, but I'll let you decide that for yourself. With that, let's go to friend. Need you to listen, I need you to hear, and don't show anything. I've been flying from town to town. Okay, if I give you a bit of company and read to you a little bit. I've got a very important book here. Yeah, see? Yeah, you want to hear? You want to read? Here's some of the case for animal rights. This is probably one of the biggest books ever written in the animal rights space and critical animal issues. Should we hear some of it? Oh, I've got, the, I've got a good section for you, Ruby. You ready? So are you familiar with Tom Reagan's inherent value and subject of a life criterion? Oh, don't we yawn? Come on, that's true. This is, this is a, the, the most important text that's probably ever been issued. This, this broke the species barrier from human to other animals' rights. This is, this is for you, mate. Are you happy to listen? I, I, I promise I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short, I'll keep it short. Okay, so, to be the subject of a life is to be an individual whose life is characterized by those features explored in the opening chapters of the present work. That is, individuals are subject of a life if they have beliefs and desires, perception, memory. Can you remember me? Oh, you're yawning again. This is, this is important stuff. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, if she knows this, I think that's probably part of part of the criteria. So memory and a sense of the future, including their own future. An emotional life together with feelings of pleasure and pain. You have a bit of those too? Hopefully more pleasure than pain. Preference and welfare interests. I, I, I know he says welfare, but he's, he, it's, it's animal rights. He, he, this, this, this book came out in 1983. I mean, that's 37 years ago. I, I know it's probably best not to use the word welfare if we don't want to promote welfare. But this was written before the movement became welfare-based. This, this is a product of this time. Let's, let's focus on the key parts of the work, eh? All right, all right, all right. So, as I was saying, with feelings of pleasure and pain, preference and welfare interests, the ability to initiate action in pursuit of their desires and goals, kind of like when you root around in the, the dirt to see what you can find, a psychophysical identity over time, and an individual welfare in the sense, I know there's that welfare thing in, and an individual welfare in the sense that their experiential life fares well or ill for them, logically independent of their utility for others, and logically independently of their being the object of anyone else's interests. Those who satisfy the subject of the life criterion themselves have a distinct kind of value, inherent value, and are not to be viewed or treated as mere receptacles. You're not a mere receptacle, are you, Ruby? Yeah? Man, you value that goes way beyond others' utility or how others could use them. I, 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 I hate to break this to you, but I mean, people use pigs for all kinds of things. I mean, things that you wouldn't even expect. 
I mean like your skin to be worn probably the biggest thing is your bodies to be eaten and, and what this is saying is basically you have value that's completely separate from those other interests and that before those other interests should even be considered your moral rights and your valid claim to them should protect you from being used and your rights being violated because you don't need to be granted rights do you you already have them you have moral rights hopefully someday we'll get you legal rights but we're not quite there yet I think that'll be a while unfortunately so what do you think do you, do you have a psychophysical identity over time do you have an experiential life that fares well or ill I mean right now you're you're kind of resting a bit because you you're, you hurt your foot aren't you so that's, you know, an experience you're having in your life. And then but most of the times you're rooting around, like when we had that play about a year ago and you're chasing me around, you remember that? And you have some dreams and the rest of it? I bet you're having a lot of dreams now that you're sleeping on these sunny days, aren't you? What, what's that? I, I know Reagan frames this as, as a subject of the life as mammals a year older. Oh, I, I know it should apply to, to more than just that, but I mean this, this is a philosophy book, and, and he wrote this. I think he was trying to establish if he could make a case for mammals a year and above, that it could also apply to others. I mean, if you get to the later, well, he, he could have just said that, but I think it was, it was going to make the the, the, the the case for animal rights h harder to prove. So if he could he could prove it with the. Well, a fish, yeah, they're probably a subject of a life too, but that's that's addressed kind of in the later later bits of his work. So a subject of a life really is just saying, if we can build a case for mammals a year and older, yeah, I know, I know most pigs are probably more like six months when they're killed, I know. They're, they're still subjects of a life though. It's just within the specific framework of this book, he wanted to set something that was um, quite transparent to prove, you know, not talking about... Um, oysters and the rest of it that can be kind of questionable sentience that we start with the animals who clearly experience life. I mean, you clearly experience life, don't you, Ruby? Yeah? I know I've seen you look up, up at me with many smiles. I think I have a picture from you last week when you were smiling and you were having a nice dream. And the whole thing is if we can establish that you have an inherent value because you're a subject of a life, then you have a valid claim to basic moral rights. The way I like to say it is that you have the right to be respected, which specifically means not being bred, used, displaced, or killed. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be moved from your home even if nothing else is done to you, would you? Certainly wouldn't want to be bred if it's for a net negative life. And here at Sanctuary, no one's using you. You get to live a life of your own. And a full life, your right to life isn't violated before you're, you're given a chance to live it, so you're not being killed before then. And that's because you have inherent value and your rights are not being violated, which unfortunately isn't the case for a lot of your fellow pig community. Should I leave you to sleep on that? Take care of yourself, hey Ruby. Yeah, you're a good girl. You keep resting. Well, there you have it. There's the first episode of Reading to the Residents. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments. I'm always curious to hear what people think, especially when it comes to new formats such as this. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I mean, it's not like I do this stuff for free. Oh wait, I do do this stuff for free. But seriously, when you like my video or perhaps add a comment to, um, to share what you think, or especially hitting that subscribe button, I know there's a lot of you watching who aren't subscribed. It really helps me a lot to know that my videos are being appreciated, which is going to inspire me to keep making them. With that, let's continue through this tumultuous year that is 2020, and remember to take care of yourselves and each other. See you in the next one. I've been flying from town to town, from London to Taiwan. I've been all around the globe trying to protect your soul. For free resources, such as a discussion guide and language document, check out veganinteractions.com.
Thanks for watching.